Um, anyway, so yeah, so my name is Michael Pelsmajor. I'm a professor at IIT, but I'm also associate chair of the Applied Math Department and our director of undergraduate studies. And I'm also advisor for all of our uh, Applied Math and Statistics majors. So I know everything more or less, <laughs> I'd say about what the courses are going on, about what the major issue, issues for our, our majors in bachelor uh, in math and statistics. Um, so any of some of that, I'm, I'm, I'm well versed in. So um, I don't wanna to take too long before giving you a chance to jump in with your specific questions, but here's the sort of three things I think I should talk about. Just one, I think, why would you major in applied math or math or in statistics at all? Um, two, why applied math and statistics in particular, which are the things we offer? And three, why would you study those things at IIT? So first of all, I think people uh, come to math because you like math, but um, I think the major question is like, what does it mean for careers? Uh, if you don't know, you might say, do I have to be a math teacher? And the answer is you can be a math teacher, but that is actually a pretty small percentage of what people become. It's just, that's what we run into high school or math teachers, of course. So biased sample there. Um, what will you have as a career? I can't tell you because mathematics is a flexible uh, uh, background. So people go into all kinds of industries. All kinds of industries need optimization. They need people to, you know, logistics to figure out the best way to do things, the most cost-effective way to do things, or they have actual problems in their, you know, technical areas that end up being math problems that you might know something about. So I can't tell you right now, you know, what kind of job you'll get, but I can tell you that mathematicians and statisticians land super well. Um, so if you like math, if you love math, if you want to be doing math all day, like math kinds of things in your job, then what you should do is major in math or a related area, and you will find a job, and then you'll be better equipped to do the kind of thing you like when you get into the work world. So that's why you should major in math, or if you should major in math or applied math and statistics. Why applied math in particular or statistics? So the difference between a uh, program and uh, any one of these things is really a matter of emphasis. The first year, um, or maybe year and a half, depending on, on whatever, you're gonna be taking calculus courses, everyone needs linear algebra, certain other basics, basics, I mean, they're whatever, certain other background or uh, mainstays that everybody needs. It's the last couple of years where you end up taking topics courses. So math at high school tends to be one thing after the other. You need algebra and then you need geometry and then beyond, you need those before you can learn trigonometry and so forth. But after a while, you get to branch out somewhat into different fields and getting really close to these cutting edge topics where things aren't so, you know, I mean, all the things in high school tend to be like hundreds of years old, what you're learning. And it's all been boiled down into super, like you can put one thing after the other and it just works perfectly. But like pretty soon the field opens up and you will get there as an undergraduate math major. Um, and so uh, when you get to choose topics, uh, applied math tends to have topics that are closer to current applications of mathematics or recent applications. Like all math, as you probably realize, is motivated or indirectly tied to useful things. But there are some areas that are more ready to jump into things. And actually, that's part of the reason I would say IIT is a particularly good place for that because you know, like any small program, there's so many topics out there. Maybe you don't, you, you don't know, but it turns out there's all different kinds of mathematics and you can specialize and one school will have one thing and the other school will have another thing. The topics that we do are particularly uh, modern uh, topics, stuff that didn't even exist maybe 20 or 50 years ago, which in the, in the world of mathematics is like yesterday. So um, for example, uh, statistics is the study of data used in data science, which is the sort of the term everyone talks about. Um, but it's the mathematics of that, I guess you'd say statistics is, or the science of data. Um, but one of the things we specialize here is we have some, it's one of the leading people in algebraic statistics. And it's hard to say what it is, but there's certain kinds of problems in statistics that you have to kind of organize your experiments or whatever. And it turns out there's some fancy techniques in algebra. Anyway, so she knows uh, she's, she's well known for that. Um, another area is stochastics, stochastic analysis. This is a math used in financial mathematics. It's used in modern applications of like uh, flow, wave flow, like modeling weather and stuff like that. And um, it's sort of like calculus, but with uncertainty built into it. Because as you can think about it, like financial markets, I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. No one can predict it. But you can say maybe with certain probabilities that there'll be certain ranges of stuff to happen, which depend on, I mean, it's more fancy than that, of course. Um, and so this is the kind of math used for this. So that's, that's one, that one thing that we're particularly good at. 
And I think I've already started telling you why applied math and IIT. So one is the topics, which will matter after a couple of years. Another thing is we have a graduate program. So um, we have five different uh, relevant graduate programs that overlap or that are in our department, which is, uh, let's see, there's two different masters of applied mathematics with different emphasis. There is a master's in uh, data science. There is master's in math, uh, mathematical finance. And there's the computational decision sciences and operations research, which is the kind of math with networks and logistics and discrete topics. Um, you, how would you pick between those? There's no way to do it. What happens is that as you get further along in your studies, you figure out what you're interested in and that if you want to, you can pursue one of these directions and you can even get a head start at it while you're an undergrad. If you have a quick start, like maybe you have a bunch of AP credit or something, or for whatever reason, you can actually start taking graduate courses while you're an undergraduate and get a head start in the master's or just learn some like cool stuff for wherever you're going um, that you might use. Okay, so that's, uh, so I'd say topics and access to those topics is a good uh, reason to do applied math at IIT. Um, another one is, uh, I think they mentioned in the previous session, uh, the double major possibility. Um, a lot of our students actually end up with two majors. They major in applied math and or statistics often combine one or the other with computer science or physics or some of psychology or business. It's um, the way we have the major design is pretty flexible. And a lot of people at IIT do a lot of mathematics anyway. So there's a way to overlap and, uh, and integrate these things. In, and that's a, that's a really popular option. Um, and then the last thing, I don't want to talk too long, but the last thing I'll definitely mention is our community. So one thing you'll hear a lot of places talk about is having small classes. But what I think you should think about is what does that really mean? So just because it's a small number of people doesn't necessarily do anything for you. Okay, so one thing, it allows you the opportunity to speak up, to be heard, to interact more with your faculty and with, uh, uh, or with, with whoever's leading, well, in our class, faculty. Um, and, uh, but, but you have to remember, like, you still have to make, it's up to you, you know, I mean, like, I mean, we won't drag you out there and force you to communicate. It's the opportunity. And if you want to get a good experience at college, you got to like, you, you know, take that half step in that direction or take that invitation up and actually participate. So with small classes, you can do it with welcoming faculty and great teaching faculty. And by the way, our department has a ton, has a, like a surprising number, I don't know, surprising number, that sounds bad. A lot of people who have worn teaching awards um, have, have come from the applied math department. So we have really great teachers, um, but it's the opportunity to get in there and like, uh, and, and have the interaction. It makes it learning more fun. It makes learning uh, easier when you can just speak up and like, it's, it's like, I mean, you don't want to be like, if you, if, you, if you don't say anything, it's just like you're watching a video and you just have to wait and hope that you hear the thing that you need to hear. If you go back and forth and you say, oh, you know, that one thing I didn't understand or what do you say? Or I, I can't read your handwriting or whatever it is, you will get your question answered. You go have a quick back and forth. It's efficient, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's the best way to do things. It's, um, and I would say with our small classes, it really does operate the way it should. You know, it's, it gives you that kind of advantage you were hoping for. More generally, I think we have a great community in the applied, uh, and, and so our department is called Applied Math, so I keep on saying that. But our students uh, are really friendly. They love math. They love doing math with each other. It's like integrated into the friendship. So it's like, that's really supportive because like, you're gonna, you're gonna spend a lot of time doing homework. I mean, this is college, that's not just IIT. Um, you're gonna spend more time doing homework with, with you know, our colleagues. It's really great when you have like a, a good community people that are support like people that like like to succeed and like to work with each other and, and like we really have a great group right now I mean I guess you know I don't know I, I guess five years from now it could be a completely new set of students but I can tell you today and hope and it seems like it's been going on for a little while there's a great tradition of uh, a really good group of people um, and uh, yeah so I, I didn't want uh, to just talk at you for too long I think um, are there any questions so far so, Michael, there was a question about applied math also being taken as a minor. Um, that is a minor option, right? Can you elaborate a little bit on uh, what that minor looks like and what are some popular combinations with majors and minors that students take alongside math and statistics? So in general, a minor IIT consists of five classes that are not required for your major, which are all in the same area. So for applied then there's some more specific requirements for, so if you're majoring in something else and you want a minor applied math, you need five math courses. Like, so if calculus one is required for a major, that won't count for the minor. Actually that class won't count anyway, because it's too low level, but 
uh, the courses are uh, Math 230, which is Introduction to Discrete Math. It's a bunch of uh, kind of fun topics um, and kind of rigorous thinking and stuff. Um, linear algebra, which is the math of matrices, not just like arithmetic, like the computate, like the rules, but also what they do and how you think about them. Um, and then you have three, uh, oh, and then uh, differential equations. So this builds on calculus. So it feels a little bit like, um, you know, when you're solving integrals, like methods for doing that, but it's, it goes beyond there because it's not just uh, for when you're doing an integral, it's like, you have, it's like, you know, the, you, one way to think about it is, you know, the derivative and you want to find the original function and you can find it up to adding a constant, maybe it rings a bell. I don't know. Um, so a more flexible class of things like that is a differential equation, which comes up in all kinds of applications. And so that's also a required basic course. And then you have two, uh, two optional, uh, you can pick your own topics courses, 400 level courses. Um, and I say IIT is really flexible about this. So I often encourage people, you know, if you're thinking about doing a minor in applied math, you can add a minor, you can double major, you can change from one to the other as you see what you go. We talk about your schedule, we see what fits into it. And you know, if, you've, if you're done after four courses and you're like, I just want one course I, I, more to get my minor, great. If you take a few courses and you wanna do a lot more, great, we'll find a way for that too. So I, we're always working with students to figure out the path that's right for them. So that's a long answer to the minor question, uh, Karine. Um, are there other questions or any follow-ups with that? Yeah, um, I was wondering if you're majoring in applied math, can you minor in statistics or is that too similar to minor in? Yeah, we actually, so we didn't really think people would do that, but yeah, we, we allow people to do any minor they want. And um, yeah, we have a, a two or three people currently minoring statistics. So they're, they're just math all the way and they can do that, yeah. Other questions? Michael, can so more you? Oh, sorry. I was going to. I was just going to clarify. More generally, minors are optional. You can just do that. But actually, as part of our major, we actually require our students to do a minor in something. Um, and the philosophy there, I believe, is that. Well, okay. Let me compare. It. Like, if you're taught, like often in high school, if you're taught a math topic, like you're like, you know, here's how you solve a problem, and you're like, application. Here's a really fake looking problem that just fits the thing we taught you just perfectly and we'll solve that thing, you know, oranges out or whatever. And you're like, okay, I can kind of see that this is useful, but it's like, that's really not a real application. So there are several ways in which we get you ready for real world applications um, with the kinds of courses we have, like real math modeling and projects courses. But also one way is if you're gonna work in a company which is not a math company, which you certainly are like a pharmaceuticals company or something, you have to speak their language they're gonna to come to you with a problem in, that they want. They're not gonna give you equations at all. You have to formulate the equations you have to do. All. You have to know their language actually to be able to work with people. So as a stepping stone into that kind of understanding, we force people to get a minor in something. You need to understand enough about something to like get what they're all about and get their kinds of problems. And so that gives you one possible maybe career path or just one way to understand like uh, enough of the world. Uh, oh, I could scrape, I could share a screen that's relevant if I'm if I manage to do it. Uh, where is it? Um, I mean, this is not the best, but uh, so this is from our webpage showing some of our alumni what he, what they've done. I mean, that's a grad student or whatever, postdoc, uh, visiting professor. So by the way, I don't expect anyone to become visiting professors or any kind of professors, but the point of that is it's hard to become a professor. That's like a big accomplishment in terms of like, so that shows something about how we're good. Data science, another professor, high school. I, I swear to God, there aren't that many high school teachers. I don't know why this, where this sample came from. Um, if you look at best jobs, you know, these kind of lists that you'll hear on the internet, mathematicians, statisticians, always at the top, um, data science, um, actuary, which is another big thing. So, um, um, so there is that. Oh, okay, the question. What kind of internships do people find within the applied math department because such, such a wide major? So, uh, you know, I, I should ask my students more carefully. Um, uh, I mean, I know Chinese is working downtown at a finance uh, place. God, I can't, I don't know where. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, like I, I, I know the names because I, I signed the forms. I, I mean, Jairam is combined. He's been at the same internship like a couple of years in a row. 
I don't know what it was, but he's a dual computer science and math major, and it has something to do with that. Um, another finance guy. It's not all finance, I promise. Um, I think there's a data science one. I'm sorry, I, I don't have it. I don't have those things in my fingertips. The, the reason is because our career center does all the back and forth with the networking and the, and the career firms. Like I don't find people internships. We teach them the stuff they can use and then they tell us, hey, I got an internship. So it's like, I'm not that closely connected to it. I'm really sorry. So I, I was wondering if you've got, um, so I got, I've got college credit in for Calc 1, Calc 2, multivariable equations and differential equations. So I, I was just wondering, just because I have that credit, does that necessarily mean like that I wouldn't even want to take differential equations in college? Or is there a possibility to be worth retaking it? Yeah, that's a great question because I'd say in general, people with transfer credit, it can happen anything from like their, their preparation was really good and they get here and they just start conquering everything at the higher level. Or it can turn out their preparation wasn't as good as they thought it was. And then it's like really hard until they make that adjustment. And I find that unfortunately, look, I've been doing this for a long time and I cannot predict what it's going to be. What I do instead is I say, let's, I say, you start with something moderately ambitious. And in that first, couple of weeks, um, you can add or drop courses and feel free to drop. We'll, we'll, we'll get you into a lower course if you feel like you want to repeat something. And then even after that time, within your first semester, if you're like midway through the semester, and you're like, oh my God, now I realize there's a problem. You can still withdraw from a course, which is, uh, you know, and then refocus on the remaining courses, you know, to research. Like, that's not a tragedy. I tell students like, it, you, you don't, like people come from, especially at IIT, I mean, it comes from vast, uh, like really, really wide variety of circumstances and backgrounds. And there's, there's no way to know. So you play it by ear after a, one semester or whatever, now you know where you're at and then you're fine as long as you listen to the signals. And I work with students to do that. Or I work with the applied math majors to do that. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, think about, even if you don't come to IIT, just, uh, it's, it's a good attitude to have because you just don't know. Yeah. So what we try to do, I mean, we want you doing like, hard stuff that other people can't do, right? By the time you're done. So my goal as an advisor is to ramp people up appropriately for them um, so that you're going, I don't know, as fast as you can or as fast as you want to, um, but not too fast so that it becomes a problem. And that depends on the individual. I, I mean, there, there are people that come in and their, their background's not that great. And so they might stumble, they might even get some bad grades. Um, and I, and they might have to cut down on the number of courses or whatever. And as long as by the end of the time they're here, that that they're like, you know, on the right, you know, doing great, I, I don't care. So, I mean, as it, yeah, I mean, I, I like to make, I, I want it to be appropriately hard for everyone. I mean, I'll say in general, college, like, I don't know if you may or may not, but not, not know, but in college, it's sort of flipped from uh, high school, which is that like, you'd say in high school, maybe it's like you do an hour of homework for every two hours you're in class or something like that. But in college, it's sort of the other way around. It's for every hour you're in class, you expect to do like three hours of homework. And that's not, that's not me. That's not IT. That's universal. Um, so that's, I mean, there's, there's these college level adjustments, which you're going to have to make anyway. Um, it's hard in that sense, but that's true no matter where you go. Um, so we have uh, two degrees. This is the Bachelor of Science in Applied Mathematics. And uh, these are all the courses. So I don't know if this is so attractive in this form, but like this is literally a list of the courses that uh, comprise the degree. Um, at IIT, every, uh, every major has a 100 course introduction to the profession um, to kind of like give you an idea of what, what is it that we're getting into, like to get excited about stuff, but also like, so you have some idea of what you're signing up for. Now in math, as I said, there's all kinds of careers, but we do have talk about some different careers. And more importantly, we have a lot of, we have, we train you, start getting you ready for this like kind of reason, like some basic things you need to know. And also there are faculty visits to tell you about different topics that you'll get to, you know, in a year or so, or a couple of years. Um, then there's the calculus sequence. I mean, many science and engineering uh, students as well as mathematicians take all these courses, even linear algebra or a version of linear algebra. Uh, discrete math is a course, uh, whoops. Uh, taken by all computer scientists. 
it's the math, among other things, is the math you need for understanding what's going on there. Um, math 350, computational mathematics. This is basically what's going on in your calculator and much more fancy stuff of that nature. So it's not, so whenever you have decimal point uh, calculations, there's a limited amount of uh, accuracy, right? Like maybe eight decimal places, maybe 16, but whatever, you're gonna stop somewhere and then you do your calculation. And usually it's not a problem in probably your experience, but it turns out there are common calculations where a little bit of inaccuracy makes a huge problem in the uh, result. And a simple example you can think about this is dividing by a, a number which is close to zero. If you divide by like 0 0.001 versus 0 0.001, 0 0.001 and 0 0.001 are very close to each other, but the answer you'll get, if I did it right, is like a thousand or 10,000, which are very far apart. Like a little bit of accuracy at the beginning makes, uh, or a little bit of inaccuracy makes a huge difference. And of course you can't be perfectly accurate with decimal calculations. And there are much more kinds of different, uh, more complicated calculations that people need to do. So there are different methods for this and ways you can think about this anyway. So that's, that's an essential topic in modern applied mathematics. Math modeling is super fun. It's, um, it's, it, the point is there is that this is the first class where you, it's really real world problem first. Like it's like, okay, we wanna describe this, you know, economic, whatever this problem about like car rentals or, you know, uh, motion throwing a ball. It's like, how many factors, how do you represent things as equations or as other mathematical objects, let's say. And then now that you have a, like an equation, maybe you plot the equation of this curve and you're like, Oh, cool. That's the curve it, like it will be, but that curve doesn't even match what I have right now. Like, okay. So did we factor in air resistance or did we factor in the fact that people are lazy or whatever? And then you change your equations. Like, so the whole process of like trying to modify it, like to deal with real problems of real data is there. Uh, real analysis is part of any math requirement at any school. It's sort of the, um, basically calculus is always like, if you think about calculus, what you actually see, it's lots of polynomials, trig functions, square roots, things like that. But there are crazier functions out there. And you might want to do calculus with a function which is much crazier. In fact, you will want to. Well, you have to, these rules you're learning in calculus don't simply apply all the time. You have to understand things at a deeper level. So that's real analysis, I would say. Um, this is kind of a proofs class, which is something you'd need in any pure math uh, program. Actually, algebra would be required in any pure math program, but we have some more flexible options with some, maybe more application. Um, actually, number theory has an interesting story. Number theory is the math used for cryptography. So, you know, internet security, the way that everything relies on this. Um, sort of the core of it is number theory. I'm teaching it this semester, so I'm kind of excited right now. Um, but it's traditionally thought of as a very pure math topic with not so many applications until this, it turned out it was useful for this. Um, and we didn't actually teach it, but um, there was a student that was like, I really want to learn number theory. And uh, we said to him, he's like, well, all right, if you can find like a whole bunch of students that want to join you, we'll try to find someone to teach it. And he found 20 other people that wanted to take it. And we're like, okay, well, I guess, I guess that's a popular topic. So we'll teach it one time. And uh, Professor Call taught it. And then it turned out two years later, they were like, there were enough people that wanted to do it again. And it just it turned out, I mean, the students wanted it and we adjusted to that. And that's the point that I'm trying to make here, which is that I still allow this. If students are really into something, we'll find a way to do it. I mean, if it makes sense, like if there's enough people to make it do it. So in this case, it became like a semi-required course. Uh, probability deals with uncertainty. It's behind statistics. It's super important. And so it's a required course. This basically means six more courses, lots of different topics to pick from. I mentioned you have to get a minor in something other than math. Although if you love math that much, you could do, you could do statistics. Uh, everyone needs some programming, some computer science and more. Uh, this is the uh, physics of motion, which is, um, you know, closely tied to calculus one. Uh, these are requirements that everyone at IIT needs. Um, and uh, free electives is just so that the total has to be, you know, high enough. So basically you can do anything with the rest of it. So it's, there's a lot of uh, course choices, just partly why I think students really like double majoring um, because you can do it, you know, it, we, it's designed to, right? So if you're in computer science, you know, take some math courses that relate to computer science and now you're halfway there. Bachelor's of math, by itself, especially minor computer science, yeah, you can get a job, no problem. Um, it's more that if there are certain career paths where you need specialized training in some area, like mathematical finance, like you, you have to take specific courses in that area. And if you decide, you know, cause you'll probably, you maybe you'll take the introduction to math finance course just as part of your bachelor's. 
And you might be like, this is awesome. And I can make a huge amount of money doing this. I want to do more of this. Then at that point, you can change your mind and like apply for a graduate degree. But like, you totally don't need to. Like, um, I mean, a lot of people think along these lines because, you know, you know, why not? You can plan for that option, but, uh, or, or for whatever reason. But um, yeah, you, you absolutely don't need to. Um, and you don't need to know what career you're going towards. Um, I mean, there's definitely uh, career, careers. Okay, so for that you wouldn't have thought of. So for example, uh, we had, uh, it's like two years ago, actually, we had a, a few, four students come back, um, alumni, and talk about what they had gone into careers. And two of them actually worked for McDonald's, but they didn't work for McDonald's. They worked for a company whose only customer is McDonald's. And they just solve all the logistics problems that McDonald's has. So I was like, yeah, I figured out Monopoly, you know, because you got to say, you know, how many do you ship to this place or whatever? And then what's the proper incentive to make people want to do it, to make it fun? And like, like there's a zillion math questions inside there in a McDonald's, like a small part of what McDonald's does. Like, but I don't, I can't tell you like bachelor's of math, <laughs> you can work at McDonald's, you know, that wouldn't sound right, you know, but uh, I don't know. Am I, am I, anyway, the long story short, you don't need five years, four years is fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, more than, I don't know the numbers, more than half of our graduates only do four years, probably two, two thirds. But we, we just, we, it's, we have a lot of other opportunities. So people, you know, often end up liking them or wanting to do them, but you don't have to. I had an applied math major. Actually, I think she started in engineering and switched to applied math. And then she took some statistics and she took some psychology courses. And then she figured out that she really liked psychology. So she was gonna do a minor in psychology. I'm busy right now. Okay, and then um, and then um, she ended up uh, double majoring in psychology, and then she actually went to a graduate program in psychology where her statistics program background gave her like a huge edge, because like that's the thing there. Like all these people that go into psychology are not necessarily that interested in math or statistics, but they can't do their studies without it, and they don't always understand it that well. So um, so like that that was like a huge incentive for like you know, from, from a psychologist's point of view, if they can get someone who really knows, actually knows statistics well, that's like awesome for them. So it's, it's, it gave her a huge leg up and she wasn't planning on going psychology at all, you know?